Up to 95% of teens reported using at least one social media platform. The weight of evidence that early use of smartphone and tablets and their effects on social and neurological development is a public health concern that continues to build. So let's talk about it. New research from the Global Mind Project indicates that delaying the age at which children first receive a portable electronic device, such as a smartphone or a tablet, can have a substantial impact on their adult mental health. Notably, this delay significantly improved their social self. So this is a composite measure that takes into account factors like self-confidence and positive interaction abilities. On the flip side, providing a child with a smartphone or tablet at a younger age was correlated with heightened instances of suicidal ideation, aggression, and feelings of detachment from reality. What's particularly intriguing is that these trends were more prominent in females and remain consistent across various geographical regions. Drawing from additional research, we know that excessive use of smartphones and engagement in social media can have detrimental effects on kids and teenagers. Young children aged two to five with an excessive amount of screen time, defined as more than one hour per day, was significantly associated with lower percentile ranks in cognition, language, and social emotional skills. Increased screen time can also lead to sleep disturbances, decreased physical activity, and issues with social development. Sleep and exercise are cornerstones for developing brains. They are essential for cognitive growth and well-being. The conclusion from this new study is in some ways sobering, even if it's utterly unsurprising. I am personally enormously enriched by tech, but striking a balance and making sure it isn't at the expense of my mental health has been something that even as an adult requires continual reinforcement and restraint. That's even with an adult experience and a more developed capacity for executive function. This is a cognitive capacity that doesn't reach maturity until the early 20s. So here's my take home. I think armed with these new facts, many of us should be at least asking the questions about when, how much, and where tablets and smartphone devices fit in, especially for children and teenagers. Ultimately, we have to weigh the merits and the trade-offs of portable devices for ourselves, for our children individually but it might mean holding out on that tablet until they're a little older, setting rules around it, and certainly demonstrating our own self-discipline in their use. On a positive note, there's an increasing acknowledgement of the addictive nature of these devices and potential downsides to their usage. This realization opens up a whole spectrum of viable options. For instance, opting for a retro style flip phone could be a thoughtful first choice for a child's first phone. Regardless of whether you specifically resonate with these suggestions, what's crucial is sparking this dialogue. As our social awareness heightens, as consensus strengthens, we might ease the collective peer pressure pushing every kid to possess an iPhone at the earliest opportunity. A little bit of food for thought, love to hear what you all think and really hope this spurs some beneficial conversation.